Hey friends, this is Roshni Shah and welcome back to my channel Nursing Study Expert. If you are watching my video for the first time, then press the subscribe button and hit the bell icon so that you will get notified whenever I put a new video. And if you are already watching my video, then thank you so much. So today's topic is about insulin injection. What is insulin? Where we have to give insulin? How to administer insulin? and many more so let's get started first of all insulin we have to give in the type 1 diabetes mellitus type 1 diabetes mellitus is a type which is seen after the age of 30 years in which there is no production of the insulin so we have to give insulin as a injection where we will give injections the insulin injections are given subcutaneously Unless it is an emergency such as diabetic ketoacidosis, we cannot give it IV. The only injection we are giving IV is the regular insulin. None other insulin can be given IV. So the sites of the insulins are forearm, abdomen, buttocks or thigh. In the abdomen, 1 cm near the umbilicus area. Divide the abdomen into 4 sites and use each sites of one anatomical region for one week and then go to next site to prevent lipodystrophy. If patient is complaining that even after taking insulin, my glucose level is not getting control. The first thing you have to do is check the way of administration might be patient is using one site continuously so how will you administer injections the insulin is administered at 90 degree because the needle of the insulin syringe is very small so even after giving at the 90 degree it will reach into subcutaneous layer only so first is you have to wash the hands wear the gloves clean the site and then hold the skin and inject the needle at 90 degree like a dart like a motion and do not aspirate and after withdrawal do not massage and we cannot shake the bottle instead of shaking just gently rotate the vial between the palm to mix the insulin and why we cannot give insulin orally because insulin is a protein if we are giving it orally it will get degenerated into the stomach because stomach contains acids and acid will degenerate that protein that's why insulin we cannot give orally so there are four types of insulin rapid acting short acting intermediate acting and long acting Rapid acting insulins are insulin Lispro, insulin Aspart and the short acting insulins are that ending with the R, Eumelin R, Novalon R and the intermediate acting insulins are the NPH insulins. So rapid acting insulins, they are clear and transparent in color. And short acting insulin, they can be given IV. And rapid and short acting insulin both are seafood insulin. Once you see the food is ready, then only give the insulin and immediately patient has to eat. Because their effects come in very short time. So patient will have hypoglycemic reaction in very short time. And the intermediate acting insulin and pH insulins are cloudy in the color. And the long acting insulin that we cannot mix with any another insulin. The only insulin that can be given IV is the regular insulin. And that too only in the emergency conditions diabetic ketoacidosis. The onset effect starts within 15 to 30 minutes of injections for rapid acting insulins and for short acting insulins 
The effect of the insulin starts within 30 to 60 minutes of administration. For intermediate acting insulin, the effect starts within 60 to 120 minutes of administration. And for long acting insulin, the effect starts within 60 to 120 minutes of administration. And the peak effect. The peak effect comes at 30 to 60 minutes of administration for rapid acting insulin. And for the short acting insulin, the peak effect comes at 2 to 5 hours. And for intermediate acting insulin, the peak effect comes between 16 to 14 hours. And the long acting insulin, the peak effects comes between 12 to 14 hours. And the insulin effect stays in the body for the duration of 3 to 5 hours for rapid acting insulin. For short acting insulin, it stays in the body for 6 to 10 hours. For intermediate acting insulin, it stays in the body for 16 to 24 hours. And for long acting insulin, it stays in the body for 18 to 24 hours. So, in the peak action of the insulin, patient will have hypoglycemic reaction. So this is the time period when we have to give them the food and do not make patients do exercise. Rapid acting and short acting both are the seafood insulins. So once we see the breakfast tray is ready, then only we have to give the insulin and then immediately eat the food. I hope you liked my video. If you like my video, don't forget to like, comment and share it with your friends and please subscribe my channel.